Hello, everybody, and welcome to Broad Topics 2021 edition. Uh, my name is Colleen. My name is Amanda. And I'm Shandy. Uh, welcome, everybody. We are joined over Zoom um, with some of our dear friends. We've got an order on my screen. Uh, Matt, Tasia, Judy, Will, and Randy. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hey. How's, Hello. how's it going, Thanks everybody? Thanks for playing. Mm -hmm. This is our first official uh, podcast recording since um, the Biden presidency has begun. So that's exciting. <sighs> Sounds nice, doesn't it? <laughs> it really does kind of feel like we're living in a totally different world. Well, yes and no. I mean, yes on one hand. And then, you know, the Democrats still haven't been able to, like, chair their committees and do anything in the Senate because yeah, yeah, Mitch is yeah, still up to yeah. his old tricks. And, Fair enough. Um, yes. Uh, apparently, uh, cancel culture is silencing people or impeaching someone. I don't know. I didn't I didn't bother to. to I know Josh Hawley was screaming about something today, uh, as they always are. But anyway... To bring some order to this show, there were several things that I wrote down um, that has happened just in 2021. If you guys want to, you can pick a topic. Um, if you don't pick the one that I hope you pick, I'm going to be real sad. Uh, <laughs> or I'm going to pick it anyway. Otherwise, you can um, suggest your own. All right. Uh, the first one would be the inauguration. Amanda, what's her name? Uh, Gorman. Amanda Gorman, thank you. Um, uh, Kamala being sworn in, Amanda Gorman's poem. You know, we could talk about that. Um, if anybody wants to talk about the cabinet picks, uh, the Bernie memes. Uh, oh, the insurrection at the Capitol, a thing that happened. Um, right. And subsequently yep. impeachment, which begins on my birthday, February 8th. Yay. Um, he was impeached for the second time on Dennis's birthday, and he's going to trial on my birthday. Hopefully I by like Shandy's. Of that. Yeah, I hope by presenting. Yeah, I hope by <laughs> Shandy's birthday we get. Uh, I don't know something good with conviction? it. Conviction. Yeah, conviction. It'll never I'm happen. But um, even better if it happened on my birthday. Oh, that's right. But it's not going to be that quick because your birthday's only the tenth, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, that it's be better. Uh, I would yeah, be better, but yeah, we got a lot of Shandy's is like two business know. weeks. Two business weeks. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Done. <laughs> okay. You're right. It would be good if it happened on your birthday. I'm sorry. I didn't think that it would be that that soon. Like it would be after two days. Um, the filibuster and um, the only correct thing that we need to talk about would be the Diet Coke button. <laughs> I know everybody wants to talk about the Diet Coke button. Only because I... <laughs> Thing. It was I don't a real know thing. what it is. Oh, okay. Because I like heard about it, but I thought it was a joke. I don't. Yeah, no, no, it was, I was real. Too busy in Bernie meme land, I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't handle anything else. You know, honestly, I am not. Oh, here's Ro is joining us now. Um, okay. She might get hashtag triggered because um, I know she said she was super over the Bernie memes on Twitter. I'm not though. Oh, I will never be over them. They've been giving me so much life. <laughs> me too. I changed my Twitter profile to the um, the one from Chicago, the Cell Block Tango one, because I oh, love it good. so much. Yeah, that's a good one. A good but, I think I'm going to make some of my own um, when I get a chance to sit down. I've got some pictures that I would like to see Bernie in. Oh, you please must. do. <laughs> must. Daniel made one for himself. I saw he that never one. really gets in on like, you know, <laughs> internet moments. Yeah, so like this, nice. is, this is a good one. I, I, like I, I totally, oh, I saw really well. his new profile picture. That was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice to tell him. Nicely done. That was great. Yeah, <laughs> I was like here in my office, like frantically working. And I like you know every now and again when I go to get water, I'll like pop in and see what he's doing. And he's like, look what I'm doing. And it's like he's face shopping Bernie into a picture. I'm like, oh, we're having very oh, different good. days, <laughs> very different work days today. Love it, love yep. it. Yep, <laughs> that's great. Okay, well, I guess now we we're, we're going to talk about the Diet Coke button. I've decided, but the Bernie memes, we might Let's as well it. kick it mm. off. Fun. Does anybody want to share their favorite? I. Had a lot of favorites, but I think the ultimate winner really has to be him sitting there with the caption, this could have been an email, because that really represents all of <laughs> all of this. <laughs> I didn't see that one. Oh, I love it. I also 
like the one. It's like his checklist for the day. It's like uh, something. Click uh, uh, ten thir- or eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock. Joe's thing. One o'clock. Post office. <laughs> <laughs> gotta take that mail yep. Yep. he said he would not um i think it was seth myers he was on and seth asked him uh can you tell us what was in the envelope and he said that he couldn't tell us <laughs> now it was probably just for showmanship but how funny would it be if he did have some like secret top secret classified thing that he was just chilling in public hoping to go undetected <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Maybe yeah. Bernie was the Secret Service agent that had the nuclear codes, and he was. <laughs> it's not a briefcase. Were so big, they were actually just like a lockbox. <laughs> yeah. It's not a briefcase. It's a Manila envelope, just to throw everybody yeah, off. Yeah, he was going to pass the codes off to Joe, like after the ceremony, and then get out of there. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert: They used to be MAGA one one one. Oh, man, so good. But did you see, um, of course, like the fundraiser that he's doing with it? Mm-hmm. And I just like all the money that, that they're raising. That's great. Uh, was it, uh, where did he donate it to again? It was some hunger. Um, the food bank or something? The food like bank, that? okay. Like yeah. some hunger thing. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. So, <laughs> it's just so good. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of other people, and I'm not going to name names, but um, you all know who they are. They would have. Just kept that money for themselves. Did a little bit of light fundraising during, you know, a coup attempt or whatever. <laughs> light fundraising during a coup attempt. No. You know. Just saying. <clears throat> Ted Cruz. Just a, a um, soft push. <laughs> Does anybody else have any Bernie memes that they want to share with us while we're laughing? <laughs> the fun parts of 2021. There have been a trillion fabulous ones, but one I really enjoyed was Bernie in the cowbell skit from SNL. Uh, <laughs> yeah, is a good one. Yes, he's been all over. That one's funny. The one of him sitting on the throne from Game of Thrones is funny. Yeah, yeah I like that one. Basically inserting him anywhere. All the album covers that they substituted Bernie in were <laughs> hilarious. There are some Star Trek ones that I really liked. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> basically anything i even just like yeah. the, like the basic ones of like places where it made sense to put him like on the bus like on the subway <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like i think they're all funny the miyazaki ones the anime um, the reason like my neighbor totoro <laughs> i didn't see that that's I great didn't see those either. that sounds great though yeah <laughs> Everybody's oh, the seen- Bob Ross painting. Oh, the yeah, Bob Ross really painting's good. great. Yeah, I think that one was another personal fave. <laughs> Gonna add a happy little birdie over there. <laughs> Some happy little mittens, I think. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that one was brilliant. I also love that Dennis photoshopped him in front of um, First Watch in Raleigh because they have Team First Watch <laughs> versus Team Waffle House. <laughs> I did not That's see good. that. Oh, yeah. man. It's... It's in uh, both PO and the meetup group, I think. Okay, I need to go. I've seen it, and I'm not (laughs) in PO, so that's great. Yeah, I I tried to put him in the last group photo from the last meetup, and I just couldn't figure it out. And after ten minutes, I gave up. Oh, ask Dennis. I bet you Dennis will do it. (laughs) Just like just hand that off to Dennis. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Matt says they put him everywhere except the Oval Office. <laughs> oh, oh, poor Bernie. Oh, that's a pretty funny joke, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were so many. It was really nice too. I know got. I know some people got a little bit like I'm over it, but it was just really nice to have something to laugh about. Because even my sisters yeah. and my uncle, and you know, I know they didn't vote for. Biden most likely but like even they were sending me like memes through like messenger or whatever like and and Instagram so it was really nice to have something that everybody was all the sane people were like you know okay this is really funny and uh, we're passing it and passing it back and forth and that it lasted for like a full two or three days that was great (laughs) we didn't have like somebody tweeting while they were taking a dump at 3 a.m. to like change the news cycle like we actually got to have a news cycle and 
you know, it was yeah, a really long one about something that was in a shithole country. So it was just great. Yeah. Or a hurricane. I think it was yeah. something we all collectively really needed. Yeah. Totally. It's like a reminder of what the internet used to be. Yeah. Where it was just kind of like fun and levity and it wasn't so heavy it was, and sad and dark all the time. I feel like it was kind of like the internet exhaling in a way. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, totally. Yes. Very much so. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, it just... There's so much tension. I wonder if we weren't transitioning from Trump as our president and all the ten- tension there has been, if the meme would have had the legs that it did. But like, a, yeah, probably not. Question. Yeah, probably not. But it was great. It was great. And Rose said, uh, I'm not over. It. I love it. OK, well, I thought that you had tweeted it. So maybe I saw somebody else and just in my like, you know, in my haste oh, yeah. of scrolling. Um, Somebody sent me the Demi Moore with Bernie one. Somebody texted oh, that's me. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I, do I applaud that. whoever did that, and I'm also kind of creeped out. <laughs> I know, right? I was like, man, and that's how you make the scene not erotic anymore. <laughs> 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 we found it. <laughs> so these joking. didn't take off like Bernie, but there was the one with. Um, Lisa Simpson and Kamala Harris were in the same outfit. <laughs> they were basically wearing the same outfit. <laughs> and then there was the one with Michelle Obama as an X-Man. Her outfit does kind of look like an X-Man outfit <clears throat> that she wore to the inauguration. I saw the Watchmen one with Michelle Obama. Oh, I yeah. see the Watchmen one. Yeah, where the X-Men one. I didn't see the X-Men one, but I did see the... Did she... Was it... Who was she dressed up as from X Men? Storm. Uh, she just had like you know energy coming out of her, um, <laughs> like she had superpowers. I think her eyes were glowing or something like that. Was anybody in particular? Okay, yeah, it was just sort of like in the style of yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I saw the one where uh, oh, yeah. that compared her to Regina King, uh, Sister Knight. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Rolling Stone one. That was hilarious. (laughs) So Matt said Uh, that, yeah, there's one he's behind uh, Janet Jackson from the Rolling Stone cover. I did not see that one, but I feel like I'm going to have to find it. (laughs) They were great. It was really just nice to have something to laugh about that, you know, I think that it even overtook the really dumb uh, Rolex gate. Rolex gate. (coughs) <coughs> I'm still choking. I'm so sorry. I don't know what that is either. Man, I missed a lot. <laughs> Peppermint tea down the wrong pipe. Yeah, so I missed the Rolex thing, but apparently Joe Biden wore Rolex at the inauguration, and uh, the New York Times wrote a whole story about how dare he present himself as a man of the people and wear a $15,000 watch. And like the, you know, I don't know, all the bad faith people, the extreme left and extreme right i don't know everybody was not everybody but there were people that were just like how dare he present himself as you know the workers president and then wear a rolex and it was like it was his inauguration who the fuck cares sit down special occasion if you can't wear your nice jewelry (laughs) and being inaugurated then when are you gonna wear it (laughs) right (laughs) that's really funny Jesus. It's not like you're wearing it to a Rolex to McDonald's or something. Come on, people, get over it. It's right, a special occasion. Right. Also, the last president who uh, identified as a populist has a gold fucking toilet. So there's right. <laughs> <laughs> black. Come on. So maybe we can. I don't know. Give the bad takes a rest for a hot minute because you know so many bad takes only ends up with us having another Trump in four years. So yeah. shut it. Um, okay. Anybody I want wanna... this Coke button? Yeah. Yeah. What well, is you that? know what? Now I might make you wait until the end of the show. Give people no. something fun to look forward to. Okay. Uh, so what do we think about, uh, anybody want to talk about the inauguration since we kind of just talked oh. about the Rolex? I cried. Who cried? Okay. A show of hands. Who cried? Uh, one hand if you cry, two hands if you day drink. Okay, everybody just cried. <laughs> I would have day drank if it wasn't dry January. Yeah. I but, would have day drank too if I were able. <laughs> oh, I miss wine, guys. We did do a toast. We did do a champagne toast with dinner, though, that night. 
We felt that it was like a special occasion. And the kids, we got them juice boxes. They usually don't have juice boxes at dinner time. So everybody did like a little toast and it was really, it was really cute. Oh, that's really nice. That's yeah. a very special moment. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. So I cried when, as soon as Kamala like did her oath, like started it, I was just like, bah! yeah, yeah, that's what did it for me too. <laughs> I was like, that is great. Uh, anybody great. else? Thoughts on inauguration? So I got to watch it with my students. I was pretty excited about it just because um, I had brought it up to the principal the day before. And I was like, hey, so I have some students who are really wanting to like watch this tomorrow. And Wednesday is normally our day where it's like they check in and it's independent work the rest of the day. And um, I told the students, I was like, yeah, you know, I'll stay in this meet as long as you guys are here. Normally done by 830. All of my kids like voluntarily stayed and watched the entire thing like together. It was pretty awesome. That's all. That is really awesome. Because even That's like, gotta be a good day as an educator. Like, there has to be like some pride and like reward in that. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And they loved the outfits. They really enjoyed all the wonderful outfits. Jewel tones are back, baby. <laughs> Jewel well, tones are great. Back. My um, my little nephew is in second grade or third grade. Second, third. Anyway. And they also, that day, instead of doing math, they watched it. <laughs> that, that was great. Math can wait. Wait. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was watching it instead of working. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I was, I was a little, I had a little nervousness because of what had happened like two weeks before. And also I was a little, I, it was a little uneasy just having so many people that close to each other, but I guess they've all been vaccinated <laughs> probably already, but yeah. just watching them walk through the you know Capitol and, you know, shaking hands and everything. I'm like, uh, where's the social distancing? <laughs> yeah. Well, apparently um, uh, I was watching on CBS and they said that everyone had been tested within like twice within that week. So everyone had been Uh, tested like a week before and then like 72 hours before. Yeah. So like there was like crazy testing for everyone that was going to be in that vicinity. Well, everybody pretty much wore a mask anyway. I really liked and thought it was very moving that they did the, um, the flags on the lawn in in honor of all the people who have passed away. That was very striking. That was really like, when you saw the wide shot, especially like when the sun started to go down and you could see all them illuminated. It was just, that was a beautiful sight. Yeah. Real quick, joining us since we last said who was joining us, uh, Susan and Joanne have entered the chat. Joanne, look, I'm using the mug you gave us. I'm really glad you're here. (laughs) (laughs) You're muted. (laughs) I'm not used to Zoom. Sorry. Uh, So I have a very political point to start off. With, well, first of all, I, I'm sorry. I thought it was nine thirty, not nine. But I just, but it gave, gave me time to finish Sabrina. Oh, so. nice. <laughs> now you can listen to the last episode. <laughs> Thank you all for suggesting that, and uh, it was it was a fantastic show. Yay! Nice, nice. Oh, you had a political point. Go for it. No, that was my political point. Is that I finished Sabrina? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, it was an emotional day. Um, I also love the jackets. Everybody's coat game was like super on. Dr. Biden's coat with the sparkles. You know I was here for that because I love sparkly things. <laughs> so, so so, it did bother me a little bit just how – I understand the importance of fashion to some extent. But it did bother me how MSNBC would keep coming back saying, well, I know this is kind of like – this kind of cute, but we're going to talk about the fashion and – just, it just went on a I bit heard much. that, too. And, and I felt for, especially MSNBC, who's supposed to be more the yeah. political piece of it, to focus on, on on the fashion over and over and over and over and over again. It was just, it was, once was good, but when they kept going back to it, and, as, and it was like, can, can we talk about what some of the really cool things that were happening there? Yeah. Like, like yeah. the Poet Little Warrior and you know, those things. <laughs> yeah, I had... Yeah. Um... I had it in several tabs on the computer. I had it. I was watching CNN's like shot because it was like the best one, and I was listening to MSNBC's commentary. So. <laughs> and for the most part, they lined up. There were a couple of times yeah. where I'd be like, "What are they talking about?" Oh yeah, that's right. I'm not watching what's on. I'm not listening to what I'm looking at. <laughs> But 
but no, it was great. Uh, that poem, man, that was awesome. Like, oh, so beautiful. I had started to like go upstairs and make some lunch when it, you know, right before she started when Garth Brooks was singing because she went on right after him. And at the end of uh, Amazing Grace, I ran upstairs and I started to make lunch. And then, like maybe, maybe twenty seconds into her her poem, I like just stopped. I was like, "Oh, I got to pay attention to this. This is yeah. wonderful." <laughs> yeah, I was really listening good. to my son and felt that way. Yeah, it was. Uh, did did y'all did y'all hear that she has a, she had a speech impediment? Yep, mm-hmm. and the way that she worked through it was just amazing. <laughs> she would recite the lyrics to Aaron Burser. Mm-hmm. She had trouble saying ours, and yep. that's how she got like yeah, which is great. Clearly, she's a big Hamilton fan because there were two Hamilton references in the show <laughs> in the poem. Sorry. Um, anything else about inauguration? Otherwise, we can move on. I'm laughing because Garth was the one who didn't obey the rules on touching and. You know, hugs and handshakes and all of that. Yeah, I know. He didn't. And he also wore his best jeans. <laughs> no, I, I said that to somebody. <laughs> Personal brand. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty great, though. Like, we had um, Lady Gaga and all of, like, you know, those kinds of singers. And then it was like, he really is about unity. Like, we're bringing in country, too. Mm-hmm. There's a little bit of everything. Yeah. yeah. If I can return to the fashion for one second, I will be quick. I did love that um, the sort of byproduct of Gaga's outfit was oh. that it helped her socially distance. <laughs> so and that was actually one of the reasons why she picked it. Oh, Seriously? Yeah. Oh, my God. That she picked that skirt because it, it helped ensure that she was staying an appropriate distance from people. Oh, she does not cease to amaze. Yeah. That is like amazing. It's, just, it's clever. It's clever. Oh, that is really clever. I like job, that. Gaga. Um, everybody was in purple because it was unity and uh, somebody suffrage. I saw on suffrage. Somebody said Shirley Chisholm. It was like an in, in, in honor of her. Yes. Oh, right. Yeah. Yep. Oh, which I thought was really nice. Um, I don't know if anybody has seen this. I tweeted it, and I will be more than happy to share the link in here. But there's this uh, video that was posted on Twitter, and it's these people doing the voices to B-roll footage of the crowd. And it starts out with um, Michelle Obama asking Lady Gaga like about the bird on her chest. And it is so funny i've watched it like eight times it's so freaking funny I'll and like is it, it <laughs> goes like on a bad a, lip reading no, no it well yes it's it, no it's meant to be sort of like a bad lip reading but like it's just their conversation sort of it's just it's so hilarious um i kind of want to play it when we're done here like with the screen share to watch everybody react to it because it's so freaking funny <laughs> Um, like it goes places it takes you places from like where it starts to where it ends and it's just it's really funny (laughs) it's just so funny so maybe if there's time at the end or when we're we're done we're recording i'll play it for anybody that hasn't seen it but yeah it's really great um i guess it's on my twitter but uh if you like ask me for it and i'll like bump it back up if you're listening and haven't seen it yet but yeah okay so inauguration is done um insurrection anybody want to talk about that other side of the coin <laughs> both start with eyes though right true <laughs> i mean it was yes it was three wednesdays three uh crazy wednesdays in a row um we can do inauguration slash impeachment which again starts on my birthday <laughs> <laughs> i will say though I, i'm so very thankful that like we could walk out of inauguration talking about the fashion and the Bernie memes and that yeah. right and not American carnage beautifully normal day like I I was so emotionally exhausted by the end of the day because yeah. it's like I really was on the edge of my seat like just terrified that something bad was going to happen mm. like the entire day and I'm so glad that the that didn't happen. And you guys it was like a nice normal inauguration, just minus the crowd. You guys heard the petty stuff that uh, Trump did, right? Right before. Okay, Judy, so. did you want to tell them? Since I've done a lot of talking, so Trump remains a petty bitch to the end. To the surprise of no one, I guess. But my favorite was was firing the usher on his way out the door. 
Oh, I did hear about that. So there was nobody there to unlock the building. So the Biden stood outside for a few seconds because nobody was there to open the door for them. It was locked. He fired the whole like the whole crew so they wouldn't have anybody there. (laughs) Well, he was having a bad day and firing people is kind of his favorite thing. (laughs) That's how he (laughs) self-soothes. Some of us, we eat candy to make ourselves feel better. He <laughs> has to say the word, you're fired. It makes him feel better. But, I mean, I would imagine that most presidents on their way out are like contemplating like what an experience that has been, like everything that's happened, you know, the change that they've hopefully helped usher in. He's thinking about how he can be petty and make his uh, replacement stand outside. Like, it's just like the fact that like that's what his brain was concentrating on. Mm-hmm. Well, it is a very little brain. Yes, it's true. <laughs> it's been really nice on Twitter without him. <laughs> it's been really yeah, nice. and I'm not even on Twitter, and, but although very occasionally, and like I certainly didn't follow him on Twitter, but it's just like, it's like there's been this, it's because just life in general is more, it's quieter <laughs> than yeah. it used to be. Yeah. Don't worry, it'll change, but it will never get to that level. At least not for four more years, I hope. Oh, here's hoping. Yeah. We've been through enough. Um, I mean, hopefully, we need some accountability first, and that's what many Republicans seem to not understand, that before you can get to the unity part, you, like, people have to be held accountable. Oh, don't worry. Don't if it was a Democrat. Yeah, they just don't want it. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> if it was a Democrat, there would be accountability. All They would have already no. voted to impeach him twice. <laughs> so, right, we would not have been waiting this long. No. <laughs> So hopefully there is accountability because I think that's that's a major piece of how we can avoid the same, you know, catastrophe happening again in four years. Yeah. There will not be an impeachment. They will not vote. The Senate senators vote. No. And even the ones that had came out and spoke against whatever, there's so much like threats um, and repercussions for the 10 senators that voted. Yeah with them to or I'm sorry, 10 uh, Republicans in Congress that voted to impeach that it's just going to scare the rest of them. I I don't understand how the base is so loud that like Trumpism is just getting bigger. Like I don't understand. Like I I get it. They're brainwashed. There's so much propaganda and misinformation out there. But like like at at some point, like we're the sane people that are, that are going to bank on the fact that perhaps, I don't know, more, perhaps maybe we should not do this. I mean, when Mitch McConnell is the one that's being like, yeah, no, this was wrong and I welcome an impeachment trial. I mean, he's the only person that sees that maybe, maybe they need to get rid of Trump. <laughs> maybe he shouldn't be running again. But, but, but Mitch is going to vote for acquittal. Of course he will. No, he'll vote for whatever his donors tell him to vote for. No, he'll vote for acquittal. Wherever, wherever the party falls, that's where he'll vote. Maybe, it's maybe. It's just he, amazing that there probably won't be any consequences for trying to overthrow the government. It's just ridiculous. Just like the people who, who protested peacefully. I mean, it's just the same thing. Yeah, totally. You know, the Black Lives Matter, it's just the same. Right. You know? Same, same. Think, yeah. Just, you know, poor little things. They're misguided. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's wild because, like, I guess, like, there's a part of me that can sort of, in a way, understand that there's a lot of pressure on them, blah, blah, blah. They've gotten themselves into this. Okay, like, whatever, whatever. What I can't understand is how you, could, like, look yourself in the mirror and be so devoid of any sort of, like, moral standing that you could live with yourself. Like, that's, I, I mean, like... They realize, like, this stuff is, like, going down in history, right? Like, the history books will have their names in it. They don't care. They'll be I edge. don't understand. But how, like, how can you not, how can you not care? And how, moreover, how can you profess to, like, you know, do something that's, like, supposed to be serving your country and, and like, be okay with the because exact they, opposite? They th- that's been my question with the Republican Party for a very long time. But, like, this is, like, to a new level. I know. It's all about... It's about power. It's not about legacy. It's about power and the agenda of bigotry. I, I, so I don't think it's about power. I, I think it's... I, I think that they have this belief in themselves that, that goes beyond anything. And it's, it's, it's not as simple as just power. I mean, they really, really believe that they are somehow saving the world. 
in their I don't know. Movies. <laughs> it's, it's it's amazing mm-hmm. that they do it. I agree. Well, but but a lot of them a lot of them know that this yeah. was wrong and even like talked out a, against it when it happened. So I can't believe that all of them actually are just like so brainwashed that they believe that they're actually doing the right thing. I think a lot of them are very knowingly doing the wrong thing. And so my question is, how do you live with yourself? Like we all do bad things sometimes. Yeah. This is next level. Like this is unbelievable. How do you, how do you come back from that? How do you live with yourself? That's what I don't get. Well, they were saying on, I don't care if it was CNN or a podcast, that a lot of those people are just afraid of what would happen if they voted against Trump, because he still does have a lot of supporters. And some of them have gotten you know, actual threats against their family. Even though they know it's wrong, they're just afraid to vote to um Yeah. But that, but that's not the senators. The senators aren't afraid. I mean, they, 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 they're doing it because because they want to push what they believe is right and don't care who, who gets trampled along the way. Yeah, I was going to say, I definitely think that some of the representatives are truly fearful for their lives and those of their families. Yeah, exactly. Because the insurrection, those people were coming for them. Yeah. I mean, yeah they were coming for the Democrats, but they were coming for the Republicans. I know. Who, which is <laughs> indication they weren't all on the board the Trump train. Which, which is all the more reason to, like... <laughs> you know, find deep within yourself some courage and actually fight back. Well, mm-hmm. but it's also it's like, why, why give in to your, the lesser angels of the party? Like why? Probably because they see what the lesser angels can do. What was it like two years before Dr. Blasey Ford could go back home because of them? Uh, Dr. Fauci had that interview over the weekend where he said mm-hmm. that they actually found where his children lived and worked and went and threatened violence against them at like, yeah at the places that they lived and worked. So like But they're good people. They're all they're all <laughs> they're they're freedom, love, freedom, sides, freedom loving sides. Americans. Yes. Freedom <laughs> loving Americans. Just hey. liberty and justice for all. Yeah. Armed to the teeth. Yeah. Armed yeah. to the teeth. I'm sure they're probably pro life too. They're right. They're all white. They're all white males, right? So they're, they're good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> pro life except if it's about taking out somebody who voted a way they didn't like yeah. but um, <laughs> well they're either white I mean, males or crazy white QAnon ladies yeah oh god um but again like that's all the more reason to like actually deal with this problem with the full force of the federal government mm-hmm. and not just run away from it like i've never had anyone you know threaten my life or my family's life so i can't pretend that i understand what that's like i imagine it's incredibly scary yeah um, they also have a lot more resources than we do so there's that but I'm not saying it's an enviable position but you can't just like put a little stop gap in it and then wait for the problem to get worse yeah yeah well isn't there something to be said about standing as a united front that yes, yes. i under i understand one individual having their life threatened by like a mob of crazy people is is terrifying and i understand that well i mean i don't it's never happened to me but like i get the concept (laughs) (laughs) all the more reason to band together and to as a united front say we will not stand for this as americans yeah and i wonder you know know, they they are not doing again they're not the senators there might be some representatives who are scared the senators are not doing it because they're I, scared. No, they're that's, scared. That's they're scared so of disappointing. They're scared of being primaried. That's what they're scared of. Possibly that, but they also they they believe that they are somehow the ones the ones who are really standing up in the in in that you know not not all of them. So I, I have a question for you all. This is one. This is about this topic, and it's, it's a topic my son and I debated a little bit about. Okay, which is better to for for Trump to Better in terms of tearing up the Republican Party, which is better for Trump to leave and form a third party or for Trump to stay and continue to have people like like Christie and, and, and our, our Governor Hogan, who are more real Republicans. They, they believe in the Republican conservative values. We may not agree with them, but they don't believe the crazy stuff, the QAnon stuff. They don't, and they aren't willing to give up everything, which is better. I, I, I vote for Trump staying in and tearing no. up that way. Nope, because the mm. nope, because the more the longer Trump is there, the more uh, they're fed the lies by the Fox News and stuff. Like, and people will remain like 
just get crazier and crazier. I think Trump, yeah. I think it's better if Trump pulls the crazies away with yeah. his third party because, like, honestly, my parents who loved John McCain turned on John McCain because Trump told them to turn on John McCain. Like, mm-hmm. if they're told, like, it's it's all about Trump. So to me, I feel like the longer Trump and Trumpism is there. Because as we saw two weeks ago, we had more people, Lindsey Graham, Kevin McCarthy, even though they still voted, you know, didn't want to impeach, like they spoke out against it and was like, yeah, what Trump did was wrong. And now two weeks later, this Trump is still there. They're like, well, I mean, we all share some responsibility in it or this is just divisive. So I don't know. I feel like I feel like the party needs to split and that's the better option for the rest of us. Yeah, no, definitely, because the problem is, as long as uh, Trump is there, we're living in two different realities. And so we can continue to disagree with, you know, a Republican, like, policies, but we need to share the same basic reality. Right. I think you need to force people to make the choice. The Republicans, because right, you will have people like my dad told me he voted for Trump in 16 because they didn't have any better options. And he was never going to vote for a Democrat. So I think you make people, you give them that choice and say, okay, are you a Republican or are you a patriot? And then they're going to have to are sit there. Are you a Republican or are you an extremist? Well, well, the, the Trump's party that he wants to start is called the Patriot Party, would be called the Patriot Party. The Patriot Extremist. Oh, I'm sorry. We God, just have to what? throw this. <laughs> yeah. Gross. The Pet oh, Party. Actually, the actually, Patriot it's Extremist a Party. party that's owned by a socialist group right now. Wait, say that again? Wait, what? That the Patriot Party is actually the name of a, of a socialist party. <laughs> That's great. That's yeah. good. That, that, is, that is wonderful. But yeah, no. So I think we need we need them to all leave, corral the crazies in one place, so that we can, you know, like keep an eye on what they're doing and intervene when they're plotting extremist, um, you know, plots. And things like that. And then maybe like have more reasonable people in the Republican Party. Right. Because then collectively shift left. We did. They're called never Trumpers. (laughs) Right. Because it's like we're never going to do it. Like we're officially in a post factual world. Like you're never going to do away with the fact that there are dueling concepts of reality. But theoretically, by pulling them off into their own party, you're limiting their power. But it's nice it's to see now that we're in, can do right now. We're in Biden land. They are finally being referred to as domestic terrorists. Woo! It's yeah. the little mm-hmm. victories. Small victories. <laughs> <laughs> you matter. gotta take what you can get yeah. these days. Seriously. Yeah. Oh, oh God. <laughs> but 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 calling them that is 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 really, really being bad to the public because it's it's making them look like they're all all bad people. It's so sad that we're doing that to them. <laughs> it is. <laughs> That's literally what, 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 what is that? What McConnell said that. Like, I, how, you know, oh, they're all just. They're all just. Oh no, it's that Rand Paul. Rand Paul, right? Oh uh, yeah, Rand. Oh god, yeah. don't even oh. hold on. Wait, wait. Don't get me started about Rand Paul. Wait, I, I, <laughs> I, I texted Mike the tweet earlier, and I might have made a Nick joke. Hold on, um, but it, with the impeachment trial, um, you know, Chief Justice Roberts is not presiding over it. Senator Patrick Leahy is because uh, he's the longest running Democrat in the Senate and the chief justice doesn't preside over trials in the Senate against uh, only does it against sitting presidents. And since Trump is no longer a sitting president, but, you know, everybody was up in arms about how this is a fake trial because the chief justice isn't participating. And it's like you guys like the Constitution, right? It's kind of in there, but okay. So... (laughs) <laughs> no, I maybe you profess go- to love so much. You seem to be very uh, unaware of the specifics. Uh, is 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 the Constitution on audiobooks dot com? I feel like they could make a killing if they just put that on audiobooks dot com. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a good idea. Or like Library of Congress. I'm sure the I'm sure Library of Congress like gives it out for free or something. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so Rand Paul tweeted today, if Chief Justice Roberts can't be bothered to come over for the so-called impeachment, makes you wonder if this exercise is constitutional at all. Should like, make you wonder. It's the document. You can look it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't what? have to wonder. You can find the answer to that. <laughs> come on. 
Yeah, he also started the office of the former president that Judy posted in the chat. I saw this, but I didn't read about it. Can you catch me up on this? I don't know that much. I'm just reading the statement he put out today. Okay. So this was it. Carry on the agenda through Trump administration, through advocacy, organizing, and public activism. And there's one more line, which I was laughing about. President Trump will always and forever be a champion for the American people. <laughs> well, that's only, ironic. only the ones that are in red states. Yeah, just specific ones. Not even the red voters yeah, in blue but, states. He doesn't care about them. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it, he's a champion for himself. Yeah, well, it's, And not a great champ. At that. <laughs> so much winning. He's the first president to be impeached twice. A lot of superlatives for him. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Look, Maybe not the ones that he anticipated, but. Uh... We had a lot of winning last week. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not tired of all the winning yet. <laughs> Let's do it for another four years and then four more years and then maybe four more years after that. Yes. Mm-hmm. What was the joke? He finally won the popular vote, but <laughs> probably not the vote he wanted. <laughs> <laughs> which, speaking of which, like, how is it? How is it possible that of the last eight elections, Republicans have won the popular vote one time, and you know that that's only because W was already in place when nine eleven happened. And so since it's arguable that he shouldn't have probably been there in the first place, then, uh, you know, a Democrat would have it's been the there. It's the electoral college. Re-elected. Mm-hmm. But whatever you think about that, seven out of eight times, like that's fucked up. And that's the other thing. It's like we clearly need to get a, get rid of the electoral college because like that's not OK. We, we should not be represented by the party that the least people that the lesser amount of people will vote for. Hey, speaking of things we should get rid of, let's talk about the filibuster. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Mm-hmm. Before you say just get rid of it, just be aware that if you get rid of it, the next time the Republicans have a two vote vote, you know, or one vote or ahead of us, they get they get the same I know. There is, there, you know. Once you do it, you do it for good. But for whether you, you, you are in charge or they are not are in charge. So honestly, you, you know, there is a check and balance that goes with that. But nothing's that goes got, away not, for both no, sides. Nothing's getting done though. Like nothing's right. nothing's uh, getting. I understood. But so, just remember that that in in two years, if this if if we lose the Senate, even by one vote, we lose all power if we get rid of the filibuster. And that's fine because I think they should eliminate it and then pass all the shit that Americans have wanted passed and then run on that. I don't know. But also, and I, I, I saw this point made the other day is the filibuster could theoretically actually help like with the working together that the filibuster was supposed to promote, like, you know, Mm. because if you know the party in power is going to pass this thing, you would be more, more willing to work with them in committee or whenever, whatever to actually get your input put in there and, and more likely to work together because you know, it's going to, it's probably going to pass. So instead of just not doing anything, like not, well, the, the only thing that really passed other than the CARES Act was the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. And that was in 2017. Like, Mitch didn't even bring things to the floor for all those years. Right. So like, I don't know. I feel like one means of, of trying to get your stamp on something is to just like dig your heels in. And right. And in two years, if the Democrats lose control and they've abolished and they don't abolish the filibuster and Mitch brings things to the floor, then it'll just be, well, the Democrats don't want to vote for this and they'll just turn it around. Like it'll just be like a public relations thing. Like maybe let some of the shitty things that they do pass and get everybody pissed off again and realize that they don't like, like you don't really like this. You just like this cartoon version that you keep hearing about the radical socialist agenda. Well, how do you feel about the radical socialist agenda when you were making seven twenty five and now you're making fifteen dollars an hour? I don't For know. real. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just very frustrating because otherwise I feel like if they don't do it and the Republicans just unilaterally for the next two years vote everything down and nothing passes, then we're going to lose the Senate anyway. Yeah. I don't know. It's fair. I don't know. I 
I don't know. I feel like I'd rather put my name attached to something if I knew it was going to pass and be forced to like negotiate my stuff in. I, I don't know. We're at such a fever pitch, though. So who knows? Like, I think we're also in danger of nothing ever getting done. But that's just me. Right. I think it's like it's a little it's a little damned if you do damned if you don't, which yeah. is, you know, really pessimistic. But I will say, though, imagine if your job was like do the least amount of things that you can and and you'll just keep having your job. Right. Where else does that work? That? <laughs> like where else does that work? Just like, uh, now I get American now I government. get Republicans. Sign me up for that. <laughs> yeah. Just do nothing and get great health care and a decent paycheck. Yeah. Very decent paycheck. I'm pretty sure that's why they try and prevent the the larger majority of the population from getting that same good health care. Exactly. Exactly. I'm pretty good sure for me, but fuck all y'all. Yeah. <laughs> the irony of the See these doing straps I pulled myself up by right. her. <laughs> the My iron- daddy gave me these boots and then I pulled the straps up with the help of, <laughs> you know, a couple of people, but by myself. <laughs> It's nope, kind all of by myself, just me. <laughs> I made them myself. I made them. I inherited myself. these bootstraps from my grandpa. And now God you want me it. to give some away after he dies? How dare you? Um, <laughs> it's my legacy. No, my legacy. that I did of, all by myself. I did all by myself. <laughs> it's kind of funny when you think about how. Um, you know, like you said, sit around and do nothing and keep your job. Isn't sitting around and doing nothing but still earning a paycheck one of the main reasons why they don't want to give stimulus aid to people? (laughs) (laughs) All the snaps. All the fucking snaps. Yeah, which is hilarious too. I mean, there is such such a contempt for the poor, which is just like so morally corrupt. Like, you know, there's... There's reasons that people are poor and it's not because they're lazy. Right. Um, But to say that like, oh, we shouldn't give a stimulus because people are going to be making more than they, than they would anyway. And like, oh my God, and they're not going to want to go back to work. It's like, well, maybe we have a problem then with how much people are getting paid. (laughs) Right. It's like, I feel like we're looking at, we're looking at this from the wrong angle. (laughs) Right. If you were doing better when you were getting extra money. Process this data. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) <laughs> That's the asshole, not the head. You have to go around. Go around. Yeah. Right. It's also amazing how many of these supporters are people that would so benefit yeah. from the programs that they are so against. Well, that's, And they just can't understand that. It, well, it's because they don't want other people to get that. And by other people, I mean they're racist. So Yes, exactly. <laughs> I, I saw this thing on Twitter that I thought was actually hilarious and true and clearly illustrates the problems with like both parties. But it was like Republicans won't pass a stimulus bill because if 100 people get it, one person may not need it versus Democrats who will pass a stimulus bill because even if 99 people don't need it, but that one person needs it. Yep. Yeah. I'm like, well, we could just figure out a different threshold of. But then how do you do that? Because you can't base it now that we're in a new year. You can't base it on last year's income because so many people's work situation changed. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I guess you can actually because they would make less. So yeah, you should base it on. Okay, just kidding. I just talked that through in my head. The words came out and I was like, oh yeah, that's right. Um, no, maybe they should like have people file their taxes and do it based on last year's income now and like adjust it or something. I don't know. Um, I feel like, you know, we're, we're a smart group of people. Maybe we could just figure something out or maybe there could be like a check mark, a checked box where like, it was like, I don't need the stimulus. I opt out. And like anybody that like, you know, is the true Republicans can just check that box. Right. Or anybody that like truly, you know, like, I mean, I meant, I remember you got your first check and you were looking for places to donate it. Yeah. I, I gave away. Almost two thirds, I think, yeah. of, of my first stimulus check because it just like it felt so unnecessary at the time. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe there could be like a check mark, like a box, like, you know, I don't, I decline, you know, I don't know, like just put people on the honor system or something. And like, yeah, mm-hmm. there's going to be people that don't need it that take it anyway. But like, I feel like there's enough good people. Like, we always assume the worst in Americans, and there's mm-hmm. enough good people in the world who would be like, you know, I'm okay. Give, you know, if the people that donate to GoFundMe's and whatever, like, I don't know. To wrap this up, um, Amanda had a positive thing that you were talking about earlier, right? 
<laughs> yes. So the lovely Daniel shared this with me earlier um, this afternoon. Um, and I haven't read it myself. And it's from the Washington Post, so it won't let me in because I don't have a subscription. Oh, uh, I text it, it one too many times. I opened it one too many times. Which is it? <laughs> Amanda, what's the article? It's, it's all called, of the things that are better. Piece. It's called 50 Things That Are Better Already. Hey, well, right, I got it. Uh, okay. 50 Things That Are Better Already? Yes. We don't have to read all 50. We just skip to some of the good ones. Yeah. Uh, the you can ignore five, Twitter. The, the first five. Number, number one is you can ignore Twitter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Check. Uh, we are not paying for golf trips. Woo. <laughs> we have a first lady who engages with the public. Yes. <laughs> Um, we get global readouts of same conversations between the president and far- foreign leaders. <laughs> Did you say Manus are in bullying? Bullying is out. Oh, uh, you, you guys feel wait. calmer, calmer after hearing the president. Yeah, it's very true. Yeah, hey, going back real quick to the uh, world leader, world leader one. Remember, when Paul <laughs> called like the president of New Zealand or Australia. Or it was Australia or something, and he was like, "Did you see my electoral college votes? They said I couldn't get two seventy, but I got three oh six. I will <laughs> never forget. It. It like his first conversation with that guy. Like I must have thought he was fucking. Say, fact, fact checkers are not overworked. Yeah. Quality entertainers want to perform for the White House. <laughs> yes. No more kid rock. Um, we have a White House staff that looks like America. Yes, that's yeah. true. Mm-hmm. Hey, we got our first um, female um, chairman of the Federal Reserve today, right? Was that, was that what she it's was? No, Secretary of Treasury. Yeah. Tre- yep. Treasury yep. Secretary. Yeah. It's Danny the Yellen. Republicans, not the Democrats who are in disarray. <laughs> yes. I've yes. gone through it. I'm at number 28 right now. So we're, we're, going, we're going through just picking out some good ones. The president does not care about Air Force One colors. <laughs> and I felt like that, but there was a big deal as to whether he cared about it. And he's like, no, I don't really care what color they are. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> we get memes about Senator Sanders, not crowd size. Yes, exactly. We have a president who doesn't think military service is for suckers and who mm-hmm. doesn't send his love to people assaulting law enforcement. Yep. It's a big plus. Yeah. Seems like oh, a given, for, for, but you know. <laughs> right. All Hamilton lovers. The Secretary of Treasury nominee has her own Hamilton lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> we have a church going president who has spent a lifetime steeped in Christian rituals and practices. Probably not going to destroy Christmas. This isn't on there, but this is my own point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who gives a fuck about Christmas? The administration wants as many people as possible to vote. And number 50 is the president will talk more to our allies than to Russian President Putin. Woohoo! <laughs> that was a sampling of that. That was great. That was good. Thank Thanks. you, Daniel. Thanks, and thank you for reading <laughs> no, no. that, Joanne. <laughs> I knew my post uh, uh, subscription <laughs> would come in handy. Yeah. You, always, you always got my back. Appreciate that. <laughs> All right. And the last thing that we need to talk about before we go is the Diet Coke button. Yes. Okay. What is this? I literally, I heard mention of this and I didn't even like read the whole story or whatever because I thought it was a joke. No, he actually had a button installed on his desk that he would push. And when he pushed it, the butler would come in with a a glass of Diet Coke. On a silver platter. On a silver platter. Stop it. Uh Uh-huh. So there was actually a family guy that had it on there and everybody thought it was a joke, but it was real. So wait, follow up questions. Like you is can do- <laughs> is it, is it can is it in a no, glass? No, it's no. In a glass. no, it was yeah, in a glass on a silver cubes? platter without ice cubes. Yeah, with I ice. Get ice cubes. Yeah. Straw? He's. I he's mean, he's a he's thirty-two oh, ounce. He's, to- he's big totally gold. a plastic what are we talking? straw. It was a, it was like a, a regular size glass. Yeah, regular size glass. Single use plastic straw. Single use plastic no, straw. All single use plastic cup, probably also. Yeah. No, no, it was glass. No, it was glass. Well, no, it was yeah. probably crystal, uh, like a crystal, uh, finest crystal from the single <laughs> use crystal. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. They like, had about twelve a day, yes. something around there. Isn't that insane? Yeah. How that man yeah. did not die of COVID is. I, I will. I just. I still don't understand. Like maybe he's a or robot. Or anything truck. else. Or anything. He has to have the most garbage diet. <laughs> right. Probably better med- medical care than the rest of us, shall we say? 
I wonder if that button's going into the Trump library. <laughs> no, which like the Trump library, I was like, I know that they do this for all presidents, but like, I mean, everyone realizes this is like the biggest joke in the world. Okay, right? I had this idea. I, I heard that they are full of the art of the deal. I had this idea on the Bible. No, 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 like his papers, which is going to consist of like all his fucking tweets. It's going to be blank pages full of blank books. (laughs) Huge signatures. Did you you guys notice how Biden, when he was signing his executive orders, simply like signed them and then moved on to the next? He didn't have to like he didn't hold them up. Yeah. No, okay, this was my idea for the Trump library, right? So it's not a library, it's a casino, right? With like a used bookstore or something. Not I don't know, something in, in within it so I could have that. But he would have this like section in this casino that would have like they set him up with like a fake Twitter and he could just sit there and tweet all day and his tweets would appear on the screen. So that way like anybody that went to this casino could still hear like his insane things. But like he would and he would think that it was going off to like the world, but he wouldn't realize that it was just yeah. fake and only going just, to like this one screen. I don't know. I like it. Yeah. I like yeah. it. So like, anybody can enter but they have to buy Trump paraphernalia to leave. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and a diet coke and a diet coke <laughs> no, or or like and a hooters there's definitely a hooters in there right definitely a hooters yeah also probably McDonald's. Out. it's yeah it's just only fast food it's actually just a food court it's not so much a library, <laughs> it's just a food court. So according to politico.com you're probably all correct because they, they're saying that it's not likely that he'll have a library so, okay, guys, Trump presidential food court. I think we need to make this happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just uh, that was good. Show that I'm binge watch- watching. So my new favorite show that I'm binge watching, and I plan to binge watch Monday through Friday for the next four years, is Jen Psaki's press conference. Oh, Jen Psaki. <laughs> Yes, I am. I'm either in love or I want to adopt her. <laughs> one or the other. I yeah, same, but same, same. It, is, mm. it has been a breath of fresh air and talk yeah. about like something that calms you down rather than riles you up. Yeah. And not once in the four press conferences I've watched has she apologized for the president. Has she lied? Has she ta- has she even said his name? In talking about himself, it's all about the American people. And we're working with Democrats and Republicans, and it is just heaven. Uh, so, so where, where do you see it? Because I've been—I wanted to catch it. Where, 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 if you, you follow, if you follow WhiteHouse.gov's Twitter, they live stream it because that's how I've seen them. And you can, and you can, you can watch the replay on um, Twitter on the Twitter feed. But I also just went on. The, um, the White House website, and you can find them there, too. Okay. Like WhiteHouse.gov? Nice. WhiteHouse.gov or something. Yeah, I don't yeah. know exactly how I got to it, but I was watching it on the smart board in my classroom before the kids came. On Friday, I was watching Thursday's press conference, and it was a great way to start the day. Yeah. Hey, uh, well, how about... Well, 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 her and Fossey, of course, was great. I was going to say, how about Dr. One. Fauci's press conference and, and all the shit he keeps talking about Trump since then? <laughs> it's so great. Oh, he is he's like, so happy. He's, he's so like, late. remember, I'm 82 <laughs> and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm going to say like what I want. The cinder blocks that were tied to his ankles have been like cut yes. free. Yeah, when he but said, also, I, 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 don't, I don't have to say I don't know anymore. I, I, I can say I don't know. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, and oh, you think so excited. Those yeah. press conferences will now also be uh, done in sign language, which I was like, yeah, how? I mean, we have the ADA. Like, that's right. been around for, for yeah. decades. Yeah, like, how it. has this not been a thing before? <laughs> but, like, thank God. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. I was going to bring that up. I'm glad you did. That's, I love that. Yes. Um, some of those interpreters. Just the bar. The bar the, like, that's the thing. The, the Republicans really just like trampled on the bar. So it is just so easy for us to just like continually clear it. We do need to eventually raise the bar again. But right now it's just like, you know, easy pass, easy pass, easy pass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, good times, everybody. Does anybody have any last thing that they want to 
bring up before we close this out? Very- um, I don't know if you mentioned this other one. As, as, a, as a federal employee, um, that the one thing that I was extremely happy about, and I figured it was going to happen early on, was the re- repeal of the of the discriminator- discrimination yep. rule that, 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 that essentially shut down any training on, yes. on, uh, on mm. discrimination. Diversity training. Diversity yeah, diversity training, training yeah. was totally cut out of the government, and they were trying to impose it on every, every company. I mean, yeah. Trump's goal, mm-hmm. it was shut down, of course, but his goal was to not know anybody doing business with the government, with it, which is just about anybody, yeah. <laughs> would have to not have diversity training. Yeah. Um, and that was removed right away. So, which is again, another <laughs> stupid, petty little thing. Like, just... yep. So many great things. So good. Just being undone. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good time. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. We appreciate it. Um, I don't know when we'll do another one of these. Um, maybe we'll see how impeachment goes. I don't know. Keep <laughs> keep an eye out. Um, if anybody has any, I uh, would like to email us anything about anything that you heard today. You can go to the broadcasters three at gmail dot com or three three one two seven six two three seven three. Thank you to the patrons, especially the ones that contribute at a certain level. And that would be Joanne with a plan. Tech from Tokyo, Eckhart Rigner, Maggie the Magnificent, Greg the Gray, and Ed the Creepy Mailman. Thank you guys so much. If you'd like to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash Jack. We just had our bonus content go up this past weekend for the patrons at the $5 higher level. And uh, tomorrow slash tonight slash last night, whenever this show comes out, we have a live uh, hangout uh, for the hangout level patrons. So maybe someday you can join us too. Anyway, um, thank you guys again. We really appreciate it. Um, on that note, my name is Colleen. My name is Amanda. And I'm Shandy. Peace out, everybody. Thanks for joining. <laughs> Bye. Bye.